great to be in the bowl game, great to be at the Peach Bowl here in Atlanta. Uh, whether we want to admit it or not, uh, for all of us who play Division I college football, one of our goals at the beginning of the season is to uh, reach the level of excellence which it requires to be a postseason game participant. Uh, when we do it with young people who are, first of all, uh, with strength of character to be a good cadet, with the academic ability to uh, thrive in a very challenging academic arena, and then finally who are good enough athletes to bring our teams to that level of success, it's an especially satisfying feeling. The 1985 Army football road to success led to the sports capital of the South, Atlanta, Georgia. From the luxurious comfort of the top flight accommodations to the practice facilities, the activities of the Peach Bowl Festival provided a fitting climax to another outstanding season. The week of events kicked off with a real taste of Southern hospitality at the Limelight Reception, held at the South's most intriguing disco. Saturday, the 28th, found the cadets visiting the Pro Football Training Center of the Atlanta Falcons. The Army contingent was treated to a down-home buffet and then was entertained by some of Georgia's best foot-stomping bluegrass musicians and cloggers. Joining in the fun, players and staff thoroughly enjoyed the Falcons' hospitality. Saturday night, the Players' Award Banquet was held. Players and coaches received commemorative Peach Bowl watches, while the evening was highlighted by the selection of the Peach Bowl Queen. Following practice the next morning, the team visited Stone Mountain Park. Enjoying an old-fashioned barbecue as well as the company of Peach Bowl hostesses, the group took an open rail hayride around the base of the world's largest exposed granite mountain. The main activity on Games Eve was the players and coaches' luncheon, giving Coach Jim Young the opportunity to express Army's appreciation. The last three years at West Point have been a very enjoyable experience for me, the opportunity to work with some outstanding young men, to be associated with as great an institution as the military academy is. And I'm very proud of our players as football players, and I'm very proud of them as uh, cadets. And to be able to come to an established bowl, such as the Peach Bowl, one uh, where charity is the objective of the game, I think is a great honor for us. We really appreciate the opportunity to be here at the Peach Bowl. We're looking forward to the game tomorrow. Thank you. Game day. The long-awaited battle with Big Ten powerhouse Illinois was at hand. A national television audience tuned in to a wet and chilly spectacle that would match the power of the pass with the power of the run. Hard hitting characterized the play of both teams as each offense probed and tested the other's D. The game's first break came on the effort of number 33, Peel Cronister, a junior defensive back filling in for the injured Darrell Blondo. Halfback Bill Lampley quickly moved toward the Illini goal. The last 22 yards were covered by quarterback Rob Healy, who was sprung loose by the performance of the offensive line and a key block by Clarence Jones. The Army defense denied the ground game Illinois had hoped to establish and forced them to go to the air early. Quarterback Jack Trudeau eagerly took up the challenge and showed why he was a projected first round NFL draft choice. But Jim Brock and his defensive teammates proved that even with a 62% career pass completion average, a quarterback can't complete passes when he's on his back. Good teams make their own breaks. 
Harold Rambosch's punt turned into another Illinois turnover when Bob Kleinhampel laid a shoulder into the ball carrier that jarred the ball loose. Doug Pavick jumped on it as quick as a hungry lineman at a free lunch table. With the offense again in business, Rob Healy went to the air himself, hitting Scott Spellman for 17 yards. Keeping to the ground, the nine-play drive was capped by All East Doug Black on a one-yard dive, overcoming a brief Illinois lead. Trudeau discovered that Peel Chronister was putting together the best performance of his life when the strong safety picked off his second interception of the day, a major factor that would help lead to his selection as the most outstanding defensive player at game's end. The resulting possession showed an unexpected option to Army's potent wishbone. A 33-yard Bill Lampley to Benny White touchdown pass. The surprise attack stunned the Illini and gave Army a 21-16 halftime advantage. The second and third periods highlighted the best both teams had to offer. The Illini were inspired as they fought their way back into contention. But Army's purpose never wavered. Despite Illinois assaults, the cadets were not about to let this game slide away. in the third quarter, coach Jim Young again called for the option pass play. In an encore performance, it worked perfectly when Clarence Jones teamed with Scott Spellman. The Black Knights had demonstrated the character of the core, coming back to take a 28-23 lead. Fourth quarter action showed Army on the move again. Following a Jim Brock fumble recovery, Healy, voted the game's most outstanding offensive player, maneuvered the cadets down the field. Clarence Jones' 18-yard gain set up a 39-yard field goal attempt by Craig Stopa that would give Army an important eight-point advantage. The Fighting Illini lived up to their nickname and again closed the gap with a last-minute drive of their own. Behind the record-setting performance of its passing game, Illinois closed to within two. The outcome of the game hinged on one play, a two-point conversion try. Peel Cronister again proved to be the man of the hour, breaking up the most important of Illinois' 55 passing attempts in the game. Victory was assured. The win was more than just effort rewarded on this day. It represented a fitting climax to an outstanding 9-3 and three season that matched its best team performance since the glory days of the late 40s. Beating a Big Ten opponent in its second consecutive bowl appearance, Army has assumed its rightful position of prominence among college football's best.